the National Football League on EA Sports. And if it's in the game, it's in the game. It's the Cleveland Browns and the Houston Texans. And it's coming up next on Madden Football. EA Sports coverage of the National Football League is on the air. Today we've got a fun AFC matchup on tap as it'll be the Cleveland Browns taking on the Houston Texans. Brandon Gordon joined as always by Charles Davis. As CD, it's been a tough few years here in Houston. Four, four, and three. Those are their win totals the last three seasons. But in is D'Amico Ryan's as head coach. What do you think he brings to the table? And it's interesting you brought up the number three because D'Amico Ryan's is the third head coach in three seasons for this team. What he brings to the table, toughness, organization, and hope. He wanted to be the head coach of the Houston Texans, the team he played for. Meanwhile, for the Browns, they come off a 7-10 season a year ago. Not great, but not a total loss either. And you think there are building blocks in place. They are there. Look at what they did last year. Their pass defense was number five in the league. Their rushing attack, sixth best in the league. They have players. They have a system. They just need to put it all together. Taken at the goal line. And it's a pretty good return here as he'll get this up to the 29. So here come the Browns for their first drive on offense. And a quarterback, a longtime signal caller in the National Football League, former Super Bowl MVP Joe Flacco. Remember when the conversation was, is Joe Flacco elite? Well, at one point, he was elite enough to not only win a Super Bowl, but be named the MVP of that game. And for a time, one of the top paid quarterbacks in the league. Not bad for a young man who transferred to Delaware from Pitt while in college. This guy has had a great career, not many chances now to lead an offense, but still capable if put on the field. From the 33, here's a second down and six. From the gun, Flacco. Oh, his first throw of the game, gonna be intercepted. Picked off by Denzel Berryman. And his guys are gonna take over at the 39-yard line. So from the 39 now, they'll come up on a first and 10. Stroud looking to throw. Open man is Noah Brown. And he's tackled a yard short of the marker. Good gain of nine on first down. Ball on the 30 now. Here's second down and a yard. They run with the former Buffalo Bill, Devin Singletary. And a good looking run there as he'll take this inside the 20 and down to the 18-yard line. A fresh set of downs on a gain of 13 there from the Texans. And that's a run that'll energize an offensive line. They'll take that one all day long. Fundamental breakdown by the defense. You've got to be able to make plays on the edge. Back-to-back -back good plays have them on the move on first down. And they'll go play action here with Stroud. To the goal line, but it's incomplete. Had the right idea there, trying to throw it to the sideline, but he led him just a little bit too much, trying to get it out to his receiver. Ends up falling to the ground incomplete. Second and 10. Man coming off a great rookie year, it's Damian Pierce. And they'll bring him down at the 13-yard line. Five yards, now it's third and five. Boys, 
Stroud to throw it. Oh, he rifles one, and that's going to be intercepted. Picked up by Jeremiah Owusu koromoa And the Browns are going to have it here at their own 15. Well, Brandon, as they say in popular culture, this one's going to leave a mark because they can see the end zone, but it'll stay out of reach because of their error. All their offensive teammates have to give them the quarterback right now, offer a little bit of encouragement because what's done is done. Let's get them next time out. Second drive coming up here for Cleveland as they return to the field on offense. And they've got to be breathing a little bit of a sigh of relief. The first time you throw the football winds up being picked. But fortunately for them, it does not lead to points. But that tells you about team football, doesn't it? Everybody gets together. What's that term they use? Complimentary football? Okay, he threw the pick. The defense got together and said, hey, let's shut them down. Let's not turn it into points. They did exactly that. Now he gets a fresh start, a clean slate. From the 20, here's second down and five. The handoff to Ford up the middle. And he'll be tackled at the 23 after a gain of three. Third and two. Again, they turn to Ford. He's going to be a yard short. Needed two, but only got one. Fourth down. Absolutely love the effort there. The ability to flow from his inside spot and stop that one at the line of scrimmage. Nice linebacker play. On fourth down, Corey Bajorquez gets set to punt for Cleveland. Desmond King deep for Houston. Fielded just inside the 30. It'll be a 44-yard punt, six on the return. And the Texans will take over. So now we get set to see Houston for their second drive of the ball game. A big mistake last time they were on the field, tossing that interception inside the red zone and really taking away what had been a pretty successful drive up to that point. Yeah, and I don't think there's any question about it. As they head out on the field for this drive, that whole offensive unit is just thinking redemption. You know, they moved it really well, didn't pay it off. This time, they want to make sure that ball ends up in the end zone, and they're the ones possessing it. From the 38 now, here comes second and eight. Stroud out of the gun here. And this is caught. It's Brown. Touchdown, Houston. Noah Brown, 62 yards. And the Texans get the upper hand as they're on the board first here this afternoon. That pass also evens the ledger for the rookie quarterback. Had the interception earlier, and now he gets the touchdown throw. The ideal touchdown to interception ratio is what? Three to one for the best quarterbacks. But he's a rookie. Just getting back to even is a big deal. Increases the confidence his teammates have in him as he tries to become their leader. Fairbairn good with the extra point, and that makes the score seven nothing. Pretty clean and simple there. Just two plays, the long pass resulting in the touchdown on play number two. So after the touchdown, here's Fairbairn now to kick it away. This fielded right at the goal line. And he will make it to the 20 yard line and no further. Now the Browns offense, they get ready to head back onto the field. They're still in search of an initial first down as they come up here first and 10. To pass, Flacco. Looking for the out route and he's got more. And he's got it past the 30 before he's hit and dropped. Give him 13 yards on the opening play of the drive and also give him a first down. First 
Flacco looks to throw. And there is Amari Cooper, his first catch. And he'll have it past midfield almost to the 40 before being taken down. 25 yards that time. Well, I think when they look at their offense, they think to themselves, weapons, weapons everywhere. And they want to move the ball around. They want to spread it to different people. But you absolutely know they want to get this man involved as well. And that's what they just did on that play. So a first and 10 now in Houston territory at the 42-yard line. And right side, they're going to go option here. And some good tackling there as he stopped up at about the 41. Only a yard on the keeper, and it'll be second down. Setting up to throw Flacco. He's going to let this go. Back of the end zone. And that will be incomplete. Tried to dial up the long one way out there, but it'll be third down. What I loved about meeting with these coaches before the game is we didn't even have to ask any questions. They told us that they were going to be aggressive and push the ball downfield. They weren't successful on that play, but look for them to try it again later. Third down. Flacco needs a decent chunk of yardage. The ball away and it falls incomplete. I think it's safe to say they've made some questionable decisions out there so far. Forced some throws into tight coverage. He's already been picked off in this game. Fourth down now, but he was fortunate on that one not to have another turnover on his ledger. On fourth down, on is Corey Bajorquez to punt. And no return here. Where will they spot it? They say just outside the 20 yard line. The Texans offense now, they get set to head back onto the field. They've got a 7-0 lead in the football as well as they start out first and 10. On the ground, it's Pierce to begin the drive. And he's able to get out to the 32, brought down there. They still need about the length of the football here, maybe a little less as they come up on second and inches. Now Stroud. That's complete to the tight end, Silver. Only a gain of a yard, but that's all they needed. And the tight end is certainly a position built to move the chains because they can control space underneath. If they've got good hands, then of course they're a dynamic target. But one other thing is they're right in the sight lines of a quarterback on just about every play. And that makes it easier for the quarterback to pick him out and deliver. Stroud now on first and 10. It's complete to Brown, right side. And he is out of bounds inside the 35. A big play on the catch and run, covering 34 yards. It's not a surprise when you read scouting reports and watch tape because you know he's a heck of a player. But he is so difficult to get down in the open field. They just want to get him the ball and let him do his thing. So the big play changes the complexion of things. Here's first and 10 just outside the 30. Here's Stroud. A quick throw there is incomplete. Noah Brown, the Ohio State man, the intended receiver. And now it's second down. Pierce now up the middle. And he's got this down almost to the 20 before he's dropped. A pickup of 11 and a Texans first down. And Stroud now to throw. And that one to the right side and incomplete. 
Looked like he had a couple of different options as far as who to throw to on that play. And who am I to say this, but I'm not sure he made the right decision. Well, the window of opportunity is always going to be small in the NFL. That's why those quarterbacks who make quick decisions and have quick releases have the most success in this league. On the bootleg, Stroud. Pass incomplete. That play call wasn't there for them against that coverage. So they're going to spin the dial now in their playbook and come up with one more shot at the marker to try and keep this series going. This offense was on the move. Now two straight incompletions have them looking at third and ten. Stroud working out of the gun. six-yard line. Jordan Elliott drops him for a four-yard loss there, and that brings up fourth down. We always talk about how teams are so competitively matched, and you just want to make those plays that give you an advantage. How about right here? The difference between letting them score a touchdown versus holding them to a field goal, that's absolutely huge with the play he just made. And you know he hated taking the loss there on third down. So a good kick there to polish off the drive with three points. Yeah, coach is always talking about finishing a drive with a kick. Two of them give you points, either an extra point, or in this case, a field goal. So after the made field goal, 10-0 here early as the kick's away. And makes it across the 20 as his guys will set up shop at the 23-yard line. Heading out as the Cleveland offense now as they get set to take over here. They'll look to get something started. They need to down 10-0 early as they've got it first and 10. run past the 30-yard line there. A solid run on first down. Gain of seven leaves him with a second and three. Now you often say that sort of opens the playbook now, second and short. What do you think, early shot here? I like where you're going. Obviously, we've been together for a while because you know me. I want to take that shot early and loosen things up. Flacco fakes the give, sets to throw. So he's three for seven throwing the football right now. Not an awful start, but also not the sharpest of starts. No, I would agree with that. But if you're a confident quarterback and to play that position, you have to be. You just act like there's something wrong with the wind currents or something wrong with the ball. <laughs> it is not you. Keep throwing. That timing usually develops. Flacco to throw here on third down. And unable to connect. If he had caught it, it would have been a first down. Instead, it's forward. And what did we talk with them about prior to the game? Their ability to move the chains, pick up first downs. So far, 0 for 3 on third down. If that continues, they have little chance of winning this one. On fourth down, on is Corey Bohorquez to punt. And he's getting a workout here in this first quarter as he gets it away. And here's a fair catch taken at about the 24-yard line. A 41-yard punt there with no return. And the Texans will take over with a first and 10. They'll start on the ground with Pierce. And not much to speak of. Call it a one yard gain up to the 26. Oh, there's plenty of traffic waiting for him up the middle. But give him credit, he tried barreling through anyway. They're fortunate to get a yard out of that one. The last play got just a yard. Here's second and nine from the 26. Back to throw, here's Stroud. And not much to speak of. Call it a one yard gain up to the 26. As a defense, you're more balanced when you're in zone coverage because you're able to keep your eyes on the quarterback and see the play develop in front of you. They're able to keep the quick pass in front of them and stop it right at the line of scrimmage. Stroud on third down now. 
not as well done defensively. They get the pressure they needed on third down. All the receivers are locked up tight, and they force that quarterback to just throw it away. On fourth down, out is the punter, Cameron Johnston, to boot it away. And no return on this one as the fair catch is signaled for and taken. So a change of possession here on the punt. And the Browns will take over first and 10. First and 10, and Flacco looking to throw. He's going to wind up and air it out. Oh, he had a man open. He overshot him. It's incomplete. A little bit of finger pointing and heavy discussion going on in the defensive backfield. It's man coverage, but they leave a guy wide open. They've got to be counting their lucky stars that this ball was overthrown. Now is second and 10. Operating off play action, Flacco. And he's going to go down. The Texans come at him and able to bring him to the ground. That was Will Anderson getting home and finishing the play. Now Charles dealing with a third and long. They'll have to try to go back to the air again, and this time avoid the sack. Certainly hard to try to establish momentum when all you're doing is going backwards, not protecting the passer, and he gets dumped on his backside. Now on third and long, they'll look to throw. He finds his man complete. That's Ford, and they'll get him down here at the 23. They'll get only a yard out of that, and it'll bring up fourth down. Ten nothing the score after one on EA Sports. The start of the second quarter, and it's the Browns in control of the football as they've got it with a fourth down coming up. And Bohorquez on to punt as he gets it away. On the return, it's King. 44-yard punt, return of nine. And it will be first and 10 as they take over. Heading out as the Texans offense as they get set to take over here. Obviously not the intended goal last drive. They had to punt the football, but still they've got the lead here and now a chance to add on to that lead if they can get points on this drive. First and 10 upcoming. And he has a big gain inside the 40 before being dropped. That's good for 21 yards and a first down. Sometimes those lines that are drawn on a grease board or in a playbook, they come to life and out on the field, don't they? We just saw that, that outside handoff to the right. That right tackle, he gets excited for that call, doesn't he? He does, because he just wants to dominate his guy and say, listen, I was the point of attack. I took care of business. That's why you're able to get downfield and add all those yards to your total. Yeah, really nice game there. Pierce has it knocked loose. Oh, and one of the linemen on the other side has got it. The fumble on first down now. Here's second down. Here's Pierce on the counter. And that play going absolutely nowhere as he's belted before he could get out of the backfield. He lost four there, and it's third down. That's a really alert defense there because they saw the heavy look come in from the offense, countered it with extra linebackers who brought a little bit of speed and heft and able to really make a big-time play for their defense. Stroud here on third and long. So from the 17 now, here's a first and 10. Stroud. His throw caught at about the five. And the Texans are looking at first and goal as he's tackled all the way down at the two-yard line. Two big 
big plays in succession. Not sure this D knows what hit them, but now they got to get ready. It's first and goal. Pierce is into the end zone. Touchdown, Houston. A strong, determined run there, Charles, to get in for six points. This is why it's such a team game, isn't it? And I know that sounds really generic and it sounds almost trite, but the blocks were made up front. Offensive line, collective victory at the line of scrimmage and downfield. And how about the finish to the run all the way into the end zone? On for the PAT, Kaimi Fairbear. He's got it, and it's 17-0. A drive that time of six plays. And it was Damian Pierce closing things out with a touchdown run. So after the touchdown, here's Fairbairn now to kick it away. And the tackle going to be made right there at the 25-yard line. And now Cleveland geared up to take the field. They're down 17-0, really needing to find that offensive spark on this drive as they have it with a first and 10. Flacco. Got an open man, that's David Njoku, the tight end. So they'll get eight out of that completion, and they'll be left with second and a couple. That's a staple of this offense, drag route to the tight end. Yeah, he's unable to use his size to break off much more yardage after the catch, but still an effective gain nonetheless. Here's a second and two now from the 33. Here's Flacco. And he'll hit the slant route, that's caught by Cooper. And he'll be stopped right at midfield. 17 yards on the play as they try to eat into this 17-point deficit. Now, that's the kind of big play you'd like to see. This first half, it hasn't gone their way, and they could use a shot in the arm, something to perk them up a bit, and they get one here in the passing game. On the ground, it's Ford, and he's going to take this ahead for right around three yards, but no more than that. Second down. A time called here because a member of the Texans is in some discomfort. The medical staff will attend to him, and we will step aside. From the 47 now, they'll work with a second and seven. They fake the handoff. Now Flacco to pass. Now a quick throw there, but it's going to be incomplete. Tight end Harrison Bryant, the intended target, and it's third down. Now it's Flacco. There's a short throw taken in by Bryant. And he'll be taken down, but he does have first down yardage. And that gain of nine buys them a new set of downs. That coach is always harp on the quarterback reading the defense and getting it to the open man. That's good recognition there. And how about what he did after the catch? Yeah, hit your tight end, let him get some rack. Yeah, but when he, when he gets moving, not many guys want to come over and put a hit on him, do they? And he'll be brought down just outside of the 30. It's a seven-yard carry to set them up with a second and three. Now Flacco. This short pass into the hands of Njoku. It'll be a pickup of four, good enough to earn him yet another first down. This is Ford. Stop it, but he does take it all the way to the two. 
25 yards to pick up there and also a first down. You got to give him the football again here. He gets the big run down to the two, pay it off. I like it. I like the call, but here's always the question. How many times do we see the big runs and the guy pats his helmet and says, take me out? Why would you go out when you've got a chance to get it again and score? Deficit. Dustin Hopkins on now to add the extra point. And it's 17-7. So the drive goes 75 yards, 10 plays. And Kareem Hunt, the one to finish it off, as he did so with a touchdown run. Touchdown, Dustin Hopkins will kick it away. Here's Desmond King on the return. And he brings us out past the 20 to the 24. The Houston's offense taking over again. So both of these teams, Charles, coming off touchdowns now, but this offense, they just had to stand on the sideline, watch their opponent author a really impressive drive to reach the end zone. Yeah, and I think you're not telling yourself the truth if you don't think there's some one-upsmanship going on right now because they just had their touchdown answered by a drive of double-digit plays that also found the end zone. Now they want to do something even more impressive to answer that one. A gain of 11 to kick off the drive, and it's a quick first down. They went counter there offensively, and a couple of defenders were on skates for a second. They certainly were, and you know what offensive linemen love about the counters and the misdirections? Sometimes you don't even have to block the defender. He can run himself out of the play if he doesn't read his keys properly. A bit of an opening there on the first down run as they get this forward for about six yards. Now, Brandon, that's the way you want to run the football. There should almost be quote bubbles above the offense right now. Bam, boom, biff. That's how they feel good about moving the football. From the 41, here's second and four. Stroud looking to throw. And the Browns pressure gets to him that time, and he's going to go down. It's J.O.K. Jeremiah Owusu Koromoa in there for the sack. Remember, he had the interception earlier. Now he adds the sack. He's really making his presence felt out there. Well, he is putting together a heck of a game. In fact, he's going to bump these plays to his highlight reel. Okay, so when he wants to show it off later on, look what I did out there, guys. And this offense, they've got to start paying him a little special attention. He's like a good basketball player, putting stats in every column. Give him a gain of five on the completion. And it'll be fourth down. When you call a wide receiver screen, no matter how many blockers you get in front of the guy that catches the ball, there's still an aspect of the guy catching it, turning into a runner, breaking tackles and creating his own yardage, and he just did on that play. Breaks a tackle. 43 yards on the punt, return of four, and they will take over first and 10. Getting set to go again as we look at the back, heading onto the field again. They're behind in the first half here, CD, but it's not through any fault of their running back. He's had a strong start to this one. And you're right about that, partner, because watching him play, you would think that his team is in the lead. He has been a lot of fun in this contest. Now let's see if they can actually make something happen, put more points on the board behind his efforts. 
Yeah, I'm curious to see, Charles, if they can play complimentary football and get that passing game going as well. Here's second and ten. Flacco. Over the middle, Amari Cooper. It's complete. Nine yards, not quite enough, and they'll be left now with third and one. and see if this is one of the key plays in the game, even though it occurred early. Now on fourth down, on is the punt team sending this one away. Fair catch, single four, and taken just shy of the 30-yard line. A 40-yard punt, no return, and out will come the offense as they take over. First and 10, it's Pierce. And room to run as he's up past the 35-yard line. 73 yards rushing for him now to this point. They don't need to run another play here before the two-minute warning. Let's see if they do it anyway. And Pierce gets it again on second down. And he'll get it out near the 40 to the 39. They'll get three as the drive continues. It's a first down. Two minutes remaining in this first half of football. So from the 39 now, they'll come up on a first and 10. Throwing now is Stroud. He'll get this into the hands of Nico Collins. A gain of three last play. This time they double it and pick up six. They kept the receiver in the short field, but that let his quarterback get the ball quickly to him before either guy in double coverage could react. Here now, second and four. Stroud to throw it. He'll get this to Devin Singletary out of the backfield. A gain of five, good enough for the first down. They'll run a draw now with Singletary. And he's going to take this across the 50 into Brown's territory. Give him three on first down. It'll set up a second and seven. Creeping up on a minute to play in this first half. Now Stroud. That's complete. It's Collins. Now the Texans will burn the first of their timeouts as the stoppage will come with a little under a minute to go in this first half. This will be play number seven on the drive. Third and a yard. Operating from the gun. Stroud, that is caught. And he'll go out of bounds after taking it a little further down inside the 40. He's got his first catch here before halftime, and it goes for a first down. Well, this might very well have been four down territory, but that's not going to matter now. They get a nice throw there on third down, and they're able to keep the drive going. Stroud now on first and 10. He's got it to Collins complete. And he'll be out of bounds about a half to a full yard shy of the five. Give him 30 yards there. Well, you don't have to be a genius to watch this game and figure out they've had plenty of success moving the football here in the first half. We've seen exhibits A, B, C, and right on down the line, haven't we? Yeah, we just saw exhibit Z right there. 
Now a chance to make that big play really hurt. It's first and goal just outside the five. The throwing again is Stroud. Throwing quickly there, but it's incomplete. Nico Collins, the intended receiver, but it'll be second and goal. And Stroud now to throw. Touchdown, Texans! Nico Collins from six yards away. And the Texans will extend their lead in the final minute of the half. The defense is doing their best, but they're struggling right now. They'll look for some help from their own offense to keep them in the game. Fairbairn now to add the extra point. And that'll make this a three-score game as the lead moves to 17. A 10-play drive that time. And it was Nico Collins who finished it off with a touchdown reception. So after the touchdown, here's Fairbair now to kick it away. And he's up past the 20 to the 22-yard line. The Browns now going to take over late in this first half. I don't think they need to be reminded of the situation here. I mean, the clock is dwindling. Three-score deficit waiting for them at halftime unless they can get something on the board here before intermission. Looking left side, and he's got a man. That's Ford. And he's able to get up here to the 26. Nice job by the defense figuring that play out and holding it to a short game, but I don't think the offense is going to be daunted. They actually accomplished their goal there. Now they've got them aware that they can throw a screen at them, maybe it'll slow the pass rush down a little bit, and they can throw it downfield. a flag final play here for Flacco and company wide open Amari Cooper and they work this well upfield across the 45 so we've come upon halftime here in Houston and it's the home team the Texans leading this one as we'll get you over to Orlando where standing by is Jonathan Coachman he has our EA Sports halftime report all right Brandon back to you too in just a bit but first welcome everyone to downtown Orlando and our EA Sports halftime reports. We were witness to a solid first half from this year's number two overall pick rookie C.J. Stroud. His two touchdown passes helped pave the way for his guys to take this lead into the intermission. All right, coach, thank you very much as we welcome you back for quarter number three. It's the Texans in front, and they're going to get the football first as we are back underway in the third quarter. And we will not have a run back here as the second half starts with a touchback. So here's the Texans offense now. They get set to start this third quarter. But Charles, for them, pretty good first half on the ground. They had some success running the ball in quarters one and two, and they've got the lead now, a chance to expand upon that lead here with their first drive in the third quarter. Yeah, and believe it or not, you and I have noticed that this great game of football has shifted towards pass first, run second. 
So for me, it is really nice to see some of these teams keeping the ground game is a big component of their offense, and it's working pretty well for them now. And let's face it, they can continue to do damage with it. And in addition, it sets up the pass game really well for them too. Following the incomplete pass, here they go again, second and 10 for the 25. Here's Stroud. Got a man and he hits him in stride. And he'll be taken down, but not before they work it across midfield. 27 yards there, a first down. And while we may be looking at the scoreboard, this offense certainly is not because they're showing no signs of backing down, even with a three-score lead here in the third quarter. I think they keep taking their shots. They've seen blown leads happen throughout this league. They don't want to fall victim to it themselves. So a first and 10 upcoming from Brown's territory now at the 48-yard line. Running it out of the gun with Pierce. And he's corralled at the 40, but not before picking up eight. Ball on the 40 now. Here's second and two. Another carry for Pierce. And he'll get it down on the play to the 37. They'll get three as the drive continues. It's a first down. But we always talk about good down and distance, allowing offenses to expand their playbook. The second and two, that means your playbook's wide open. You can run just about anything. But a lot of times, the play caller, he just looks down at his sheet sees the short yardage runs, and goes to one of those. And they'll let the quarterback keep it here on first and 10. And he probably should have given that one off as he's going to get hit and taken down behind the line. Anthony Walker up behind the line and finishing that play off. Well, that play never really got off the launching pad. He had a linebacker in his face before he had a chance to do much of anything. Yeah, I think his big boys up front, that offensive line, They've got to do a little bit better job of protecting him if they're going to continue to run the option like this. Dropped at the 35, so able to display his strength, but not much room to operate. Four yards on the pickup there, and now they're left with a third and eight. They're pretty good spot right now with a convincing lead. I think this is where they put on the boxing gloves, start to try and pound them into submission. And the offensive line, they've controlled this game. I don't see why that trend would change now. Stroud working out of the gun. And a throw there going to be incomplete. Tight end has become a bigger and bigger part of the passing game in the NFL. But if you drop the football, that position can get swapped out with a you know, wide receiver in that spot, a running back in that spot. There are other ways they can go if you're not going to catch the ball. And that's not just his first drop, his second drop of the game. The kick by Fairbairn is good, and that will extend their lead even further. So chalk that down as an eight-play drive capped with a field goal. Yeah, as a friend of mine used to say, they were moving and grooving for a while, but they couldn't keep the momentum going enough to get a touchdown out of it. now following the made field goal he'll send this one away from his end zone here comes Jerome Ford and he'll be brought down at the 28 yard line so the decision to bring it out of the end zone gets him three more here's the Browns now they get set for their first possession of the third quarter First down, Flacco. That pass complete to Moore. And he's taken down, but able to slip across the 35. The drive starting with a first down, 11 yards on that pickup. Well, we talk all the time about playing situational football. And right now, I think the scoreboard is dictating what they need to do. Where they are in this game, they've got to push the ball downfield, take their shots, try and get big chunks of yardage in a short amount of time. That was a nice play there. 
he's across the 43 extra yards to the 43. Give him five on the carry there, and it'll be second down. Nice satisfying run on first down for the offense, picking up five, which means defensively, the thought process is entirely different. You don't want to panic, but at the same time, you're saying to each other, we've got to tighten this down. We can't give up gains like that. On second down, it's Ford. Now he's going to be out of bounds, but not before he takes it inside the 40. Big yardage there for the Browns, 18. So a first and 10 now in Houston territory at the 39-yard line. They'll keep it on the ground, four. And not able to break away this time as they're going to stop him right around the line of scrimmage. Denzel Perryman there to bring him down. So after the run for no gain, here's second and ten. Now a give right side. It's four. 79 yards rushing for him now in the ball game. This offense in desperate need of a conversion as they come up on third down. Setting up to throw Flacco. They'll try and set up the screen. It's complete. And he's going to be taken down with another first down as the stop's made at the Texans' 20-yard line. That'll move the sticks for the Browns, a gain of 12. They ran that one well, and not only did they pick up a nice chunk of yardage on the screen, they sent a message to the defense. Rush the passer all you want, but you better be careful. We can hit you going back the other direction. They'll run on first down. Four. Even with that broken tackle, he'll be brought down short of the 15. Tackle by Jonathan Grenard. It's now second and six at the 17-yard line. Second down and six now. And that'll be incomplete. We do have a penalty flag down, however. Let's see what that's about. That's on the Pro Bowl guard, Joel Batonio. Still second down. Here's Flacco. Took a shot as he let that go. And it's going to bring up the third down. We've got to give out a little more claws on that play. It has to go to the defense. More good work by them. They've taken away the passing lanes all game long. And you can see the frustration that it's causing because he just about threw that one into the first row. Third down. Flacco needs a decent chunk of yardage. Oh, it's intercepted. A drive killer there. Derek Stingley picks it, and the Texans will take over here just shy of the 30. Well, look, we're watching a quarterback here that's obviously been around for a long time. That's a throw he wishes he had back. He certainly does, but as you well know, this is a guy that's used to taking a few chances, used to fitting it into tight windows. These are throws that he's made before. Didn't happen to get it completed in this case. Out comes a Houston offense as they get set to take over here. Last time out, you remember their drive stalled, but thanks to their kicker, booted a long field goal to at least get them three. Now here, they'll try to do better and find the end zone. And in our experience, how much fun is it for coaches to know that they've got a kicker who can nail it from long distance? Now, the hard part is, as an offensive play caller, you don't want that in your head too much where you're relying on it. And he goes out and gets the job done for them. But I'm quite sure he would be content to just kick extra points from here on out. Yeah, absolutely no question. I think his teammates would be okay with him just kicking the extra points as well. Second and seven. They go again with Pierce. 
And he went backwards. He'll be down at the 30. A yard in the wrong direction makes third down tougher. Third down and nine. Well, partner, I guess sometimes it's just a matter of philosophy. Some say run until they absolutely stop you, and others say, well, when you think they're about to stop you, fool them a little bit. I guess they should have tried to fool them on that play. On third down, they go with Singletary. And he's going to get this to the 31, but that is still well short of what he needed. Only a yard on the pickup there, and it's going to leave him with a fourth down. That's a really good job right there. Just kept stringing that play out, pushing further and further towards the sideline. Really good fundamentals by that defense. He was trying to put his foot in the ground and turn up field. He just couldn't. No, they really had a picket fence in front of him. No room to find to get upfield. Here's Cameron Johnston now as he's on to punt for Houston. Fair catch called for and made right at the 25-yard line. So possession goes over here on the punt. Cleveland offense making their way out. I kind of feel like they've reached a do-or-die point in this game, Charles. If they're going to try to pull off an impressive comeback, it has to start right here, right now. Yeah, now they've got a final chance to get out of this situation, but they also understand they've got to move the ball and move it fast. In addition, they need to save as much time so they can get two more possessions. Great way to start the drive. 20 big ones at a first down. Boy, where would these guys be without his performance on the ground? That puts him over 100 yards now for the afternoon, and I tell you, he seems to be getting stronger as the day goes along. Right back to him on first down. And a good run here as he'll rumble all the way down to the 40-yard line. 14 yards, and it's a Cleveland first down. He's done his part sailing past the century mark on the ground with rushing yardage, but his team, a different story. Yeah, they're down big in this ball game, so sometimes you wonder to yourself how much of that is him with a great performance and how much of that is the defense just loosening up because they have a big lead. And a very determined run there as he'll take this all the way down to the 27. Good effort. Another nice gain, 13 yards that time, and another first down. I'm not sure you can be more efficient on offense than to have three downs and have them all turn into first downs. And defensively, you've got to figure out how to slow them down. Some guys might bring more pressure. Some guys might be a little more exotic. And as a last resort, you might even call timeout and try and regroup. And now a throw on first down there, but it's incomplete. Elijah Moore, the intended receiver, and that'll bring up second down. And right side, they're going to go option here. And he's able to motor his way down to the 16-yard line. The decision to keep it turns out to be a good one. 11 yards in the first down. First down Brown. Now a handoff up the middle. It's Ford, and he'll take this one down near the 15. Just a yard on the pickup there, and it'll bring up a second and nine. They'll keep it on the ground. Four. And maybe a measure of revenge there. He's had his way in this one, but this time they get him behind the line. It'll go as a loss of a yard, so now they deal with third and 11. Well, they've had success on the ground on this drive, and that makes the defense more likely to overcommit to stop the run as they did on that play. But keep in mind, it makes them susceptible to play-action passes as well. Flacco. For the end zone, but that's going to wind up incomplete. Blanketed coverage by Houston. Makes it fourth down. Quarterback in 101. Never force the ball into double coverage, especially not this close to the goal line. The windows are so tight, you just don't want to force it in there because it could be tipped up and picked off. Hop 
Hopkins' kick is good. Now that will move the deficit from 20 down to 17. So the drive stalls out inside the 15-yard line, but they do get three. And I've talked with enough players nowadays that when they have these types of kicks, that no one says to their guy, hey, that's just like making an extra point piece of cake. Because the extra point is not a piece of cake anymore. <laughs> but kicking a field goal from that distance, just give him confidence and let him knock it through. Following the made field goal for three, Hopkins now to kick it off. And it'll come out to the 25 as King opts for the touchback. And the football going back over now to the Houston Texans. And now you've got the clock winding down here in the third quarter. Your three scores to the good. What's your approach on this drive? Too early to fully commit to playing the clock game. Yet at the same time, you're also not going pell-mell like you would in two-minute offense. This is what NFL offense is called four-minute football. Take the clock out of the game a little bit, wind it down, but at the same time, keep advancing the ball down the field. They'll break the huddle, come up on second and eight at the 27-yard line. Back to throw, here's Stroud. And he's taken down. This will be a Brown sack. Well, Zadarius Smith there getting in and bringing him to the ground. So they'll get a little extra time to come up with his third down play as we play three quarters. We'll return with more after this. This is the NFL, and it's on EA Sports. The Texans on third down. They've struggled to the tune of two for eight so far. This is third and 11. Going for it with Pierce. And he's not gonna sniff the first down here. He stopped at the 25. Well, the guys who are paid to make the tackles deserve some kudos there, but I think they deserve even bigger ones because in that situation, they had to be thinking pass. Loosened up defense, going to pass coverage. Instead, maybe they surprised him a little bit running the ball, yet they rallied to it and stopped him well short of a first down. Here's Cameron Johnston now as he'll punt it away for the fourth time today. And a fair catch called for and made just inside the 35-yard line. 37 yards on the punt with no return. The Browns set and ready to go on offense. Even though they were able to force the punt defensively, still a big hole to climb out of, especially at this late stage of the contest. Throwing here on first down, Flacco. And that's another play that's painted the picture of this game overall. It's been a blowout. It's been continually fueled by big turnovers and stops for one side and an inability to advance the ball from the other. After the incomplete pass here now is second and 10. Flacco looks to throw. Throw left side complete. That's Ford. And he'll get up to the 43-yard line. Nine yards, not quite enough, and they'll be left now with third and one. He's had success running the football. This is more or less an extension of that because they drop it off to him on the screen. And I'll bet he's thinking to himself, if I didn't have to slow up a bit here in traffic, I could have really made something out of that one. Third and just one, it's Flacco. Work in the middle of the field, and he's got a man complete. And he is going to have a Browns first down as they're able to convert by plenty there on third and one. That was simply snap, rock, and fire. I mean, they didn't take long at all. Slant route, and I loved where he put it. He put on the body of the receiver low so that only he can catch it. Yeah, I don't think there was any magical formula there. Defensively, that's just tough to defend. Very much so. And that way, it allows the receiver to keep his body in front of the defender and not allow him to go through him to knock the ball away. And they'll come up second and seven. Flacco will take to the air again. Over the middle and into the hands of his receiver, Moore. 
call it a gain of six on the play, and it'll leave them with third and a full yard to go. You got the big lead defensively, willing to give them that underneath stuff, right? And this is why you work on your tackling. Tackle them after the catch, inbounds, keep the clock running. Just go ahead and bleed the game out that way. Flacco to throw here on third down. Able to find the open man. That's complete. And he is going to have a Browns first down as they're able to convert by plenty there on third and one. That's not the first time they've looked his way when they've needed a big play. He's been the go-to guy all game long. And they get the hookup again on third down to keep this drive alive. They look to throw on first and ten with Flacco. But he's got his receiver, Cooper. And he gets this one inside the 15, just a yard or two shy of the 10. 23 yards, the final tally. A three-score game here late. You can probably rule out the comeback, but certainly some kind of a moral victory to be had if they can get a few more points to close things out. And to that end, a nice pass play there to push things downfield. Yeah, and we know in this league... A loss is a loss, and no one wants anything to count as a moral victory or, boy, something that feels a little bit cheap. But if they turn that lead down to just two scores, that's still a benefit to this squad. Another good gain. That's now 35 yards combined on those last two plays. And what a nice example there of a tight end doing exactly what he needs to do. How about how he worked his way to the outside, made sure he secured the catch, and then anything after that, we count that as a bonus, and indeed, he gets enough for the first down. Ford, diving for the end zone, and he is in, touchdown. And Charles, he's able to dive in there in a short yardage situation. Just find a place to get to the end zone. Didn't matter where it was, but once he did, used his nose for the end zone and dove in. Now it's Hopkins to add the extra point. And the lead is trimmed down to 10. That time a nine play drive and it ends with a touchdown for Cleveland. Following the touchdown, Dustin Hopkins will kick it away. And this take it in at the goal line. And he will be brought down here inside the 20. Good coverage as he's dropped at the 17. Houston set to take over. They've been pretty anemic on this side of the football in the second half, just three points, and you just saw the touchdown go the other way. So it's a two-score game. We're not done here yet. I think everyone's on the edge of their seats now because they're anticipating what's coming, and I sense that everyone in the stadium knows they need to keep it on the ground. So if you're going to do that, hope the quarterback is stretched a little bit. Some bootlegs, right? Some fakes inside, getting out to the perimeter. Those might be open for him. Here's second and five now from the 22. Pierce takes it straight ahead. And he will find his way forward to about the 23-yard line. It'll be a pickup of a couple, and it leaves them with a third and three. This defense starting to buckle down when they need to, and right now they're winning this fourth quarter, losing the game, but they're winning in the fourth quarter. And what a fine line it is about what they're trying to get done because they're down, so they obviously need the football, need a score, but they can't be so aggressive as to give up their edge, their gaps, and have the offense hit them with a big play. And sensing the momentum, maybe changing here a little bit, Charles. Yeah, this defense got to get off the field quickly, and their offense got them a touchdown last time they had the ball, so they should get another shot. Here's Cameron Johnston now, as he's on for the fifth time here today. Fair catch called for and taken right near the 30-yard line. 
There again is the running back as he trots onto the field. He's been a good workhorse. I know we use the word workhorse a lot, but he's been a good workhorse for him in this one. No doubt about it, and there's nothing wrong with that. That's what you're looking for if you're a back because that means everything's coming together for you. Big guys up front have created space. You've run through it. you probably got some help even from the wide receivers who want to catch passes as opposed to block, but they're helping out too. Yeah, everyone's pitching in. He's had a good game. Oh, when you see a quarterback retreating away from the line of scrimmage toward the other goal line like that, usually doesn't end well. You're exactly right about that. Normally, if they're moving from side to side, they've got a chance maybe to get back upfield. He was trying to shake defenders and extend the play, but it doesn't work out very well for them at all. You need those extra yards on the other side of the line of scrimmage. Now you're digging a hole for your offense. Flacco's throw complete there to Moore. It'll be a gain of five. And they're going to be staring at a third and long here. Now it's Flacco. And he'll go right back to Moore. Complete again. A gain of eight there on the play. And that'll bring up fourth down. They're going to try it. Here's Flacco. And it's going to be batted down. It will go the other way with the football. The Browns unable to move the chains on fourth down. And the Texans take over an excellent field position. Apparently, they weren't interested in playing the field position game. They opt to keep their offense out there. A big mistake in hindsight. Yeah, that one backfired in hindsight. It's always 20-20, but let's call it what it was. We would have first guessed that one and said, don't do it here. Bad situation. I think they need to be closer to midfield before I would start to think it was a good idea. Yeah. And once you start taking risks like that, you're going to have to keep taking them throughout the game, especially when they don't work. Yeah, at this stage of the second half, interesting. Well, they sent the power set out there, and their job is to be man on man and move people so they can run the football. But that time, too many men didn't get moved in the box defensively. They end up throwing him for a loss. What a great effort there. He's going to get this inside the 15, and they'll spot it at the 13-yard line. Nice run. 114 yards rushing now for the ball game on 24 carries. No doubt those are the types of carries they're looking for here, Charles. The lead in the fourth quarter. This is when coaches that have a reliable running game, they breathe a little easier on the sideline. Yeah, they love the idea that they can take the air out of the football at this point of the game. That means they're really counting on that offensive line, counting on the runners, taking care of the football. Because you're going to tell your quarterback, hey, no time to be a hero. We're not going to throw it here. Just eat up that clock. And if you have the ball, they can't score. Under four to go now as the clock runs and they come up on second down. Throwing now is Stroud. And it's caught. A five-yard gain there makes it first and goal. When you have someone throwing it that well, that confidently, you don't have to call the game in fear at all, do you? You just go ahead and play. Yep, confidence with a lead to throw it here in the fourth, and boom, he's on the money. Yeah, you don't have to tuck your head in and take and go like turtle at this point. You can just go ahead and play. They'll run here with Pierce. Nothing doing there. They're going to wind up holding him at the two. No gain there, and it's going to set up second and goal. This is where coaches have to have spent a lot of time going over situations with their players because him getting tackled there is not the worst thing in the world. You're going to run more plays, right? Clock's going to go. But his thought process is getting into the end zone. It's counterintuitive for him to actually go down in this spot. Yeah, but you, like you say, you don't. And he's in for the score. Touchdown, Texans. Damian Pierce with his second touchdown of the afternoon. And the Texans are an extra point away from making this a three-score game. 
And they would not be denied on the ground, powering it in just one play after they got stopped short. And how about how many tight ends were on the field? Because in today's NFL, we think of the tight end more as a pass catcher. But this group, they tell them you've got to be able to run block to stay on this team. And they committed to it and got it done right there. Extra point by Fairbairn, up and good. And that'll make this a three-score game now. The lead moves to 17. Touchdown, here's Fairbear now to kick it away. On the return, here's Jerome Ford. And he'll be tackled just shy of the 25. And the Browns getting set to go. Well, this game, it has had no shortage of offense. They've been able to put up a decent amount of points on this side, Charles. They just have not been able to keep pace with the other offense they're going against here. Yeah, that's a good way of pointing things out because now it's not a total loss because, as you said, they've scored some points, so there's some plays they can build on moments where the game plan actually worked. But overall, though, they were just out personnel. They were going up against a team that's playing at an elite level. So the completion good for six yards, and it's second down. And quickly, they get to the line. They fake the handoff. Now Flacco to pass. And that is taken in by Njoku. And they will get him down, but not before he gets very good yardage there, as that will lead us right into the two-minute warning. First and 10 here for Flacco. Right back to Njoku. And that's good for a gain of six, and that'll make it second down. Nice rhythm throw there on first down. He located his tight end, made it a nice, easy pitch and catch. Hoping he can break a tackle or two. Wasn't able to do that there, but still good yardage. They're going to need to get up and set in a hurry. Flacco here on second down. And he's got the hook up to Moore. Eighth catch for him now. He's been a big factor, and it's a first down. And the offense moving quickly to the line. First and 10, and Flacco looking to throw. Over the middle, Amari Cooper, it's complete. And down inside the 15 he goes. The Browns passing game finding its stride. They've got another first down. And this has been a nice answer to the touchdown drive against them a few minutes ago because they've come out and reestablished the tempo. A nice throw there, and they're putting together a very strong drive as a response. A red zone first down for Flacco. And Joku pulls this one in. He's got it for a Cleveland touchdown. From 13 yards out. And the Browns have got it back to a two-score game here in the fourth. And he is a reliable target. They like to get him involved. They got him involved there for the score. And they should. He's a very good player. Remember, they can use him in certain positions, so many different spots, and he usually comes through for them. Here's Hopkins now for the extra point. And the lead is trimmed down to 10. So the drive there took six plays, and it's capped off by the Browns' touchdown. So two scores down, time definitely not an ally, but here comes the onside kick. And this is going to be recovered by the hands team. And that should just about put a camper on this one. The Texans back out there and ready to go. And a few kneel downs should just about do it. Now, defensively, they do have all three timeouts, but very little reason to use them at this point. So from the 36 now, first and 10. 
They'll run out of the gun with Singletary. And he'll maneuver his way forward for about four, second and six. Now the Browns will use the first of their three timeouts as they stop it here with just under 40 seconds to go in the game. Second and six. Now a handoff for Pierce. And the Texans are going to have a first down, and that is a big one, as they should be able to run it out from here. The D can only stop it one more time as they take the knee. The Browns will quickly use their third and final timeout as they'll stop it with a little over 30 ticks to go in the football game. To a knee goes Stroud, and that is going to be all she wrote. Listen, anytime you take a knee to end a game, that means you've won it. So it doesn't matter whether it's home or on the road, but there's something a little extra special about <laughs> doing it in front of your home crowd, isn't there? And the home crowd applauding. They're happy with what they've seen. Chalk this one up in the left-hand column for a win. Yeah, that's right. Head to the locker room, throw the wristbands in the crowd for the kids, your gloves, your towels. Get to share it with the home team.